On June 27th, 2002, I took my first steps towards the WWE ring. The first massive opportunity to realize a dream, a golden opportunity to make it, the world of sports entertainment, a chance to prove I belonged in the WWE universe. And I failed. But in that failure, and over a 20-year career, I've dedicated my entire life's work to three words. Never give up. For those who've heard that message and stood beside me, I'm forever indebted to your passion and support. I've had to work to earn my place in WWE history. That work led to Royal Rumble wins, title reigns, WrestleMania main events. You were there. From watching me as a young man, gritting his teeth in generic boots and tights, to the vast array of colorful shirts, wristbands, ball caps, have always been the driving force for what happens in our universe. A universe with larger-than-life performers like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, and the first superstar, Bruno San Martino, standing on the shoulders of these giants, trying to become a legend of my own. Let's get back to the ring. The same ring each and every WWE superstar gets to take that exciting walk to. There is a certain magic that occurs in that 20 by 20 square. A symphony conducted by the music, the fans, the cheers, the boos, and of course, the superstars looking to always rise to that occasion to capture the next golden ticket, the next opportunity. I began my journey in one of the most celebrated classes in WWE history. From my start until today, I've competed against some of sports entertainment's biggest superstars. Those who've defined generations of entertainment, culture, sport, those who've electrified crowds, those who've soared through the sky, those who helped me become better at knowing who I was and what I was made of. And, you know, I did enjoy quite a bit of success, but with success comes setbacks. And I've done my fair share of celebrating, but many times I face the agony of defeat. No one who has dedicated their entire life to WWE has been able to remain undefeated. But those words, that mantra to always try to be better, has reminded me to never give up. And in the end, I think I did all right. So while I'm honored that the good folks at 2K selected me to be their focus for the WWE 2K23 Showcase, I was hoping to share some of that spotlight, some of the best superstars I've ever stood across the ring from on a number of very special nights. So, we prepared a list. During this time, we're gonna relive the nights where these fine and sometimes not so fine superstars managed to get the better of me. Maybe there was some underhandedness, and maybe some rules were broken, and maybe simply I just wasn't the best superstar in the ring that night. Regardless, through all these setbacks, I'd have to remind myself, never give up. These superstars and legends helped tell the story of not only my career, but of the WWE for the last 20 years. And they deserve as much recognition and celebration as I've received for any of my accomplishments. They managed to defeat me at the highest levels on the biggest stages. So now, with you stepping into their shoes, I'm looking to get those wins back. You can do your best and try to follow the objectives, but I think it'll take me roughly five moves to have you staring up at the lights. So are you good enough to follow in their footsteps? Can you keep from receiving an attitude adjustment? Can you even see me? Because while these superstars are proven greats, and while you may be, I think only one thing is true. You can't beat me! Rob Van Dam, Mr. Monday Night, the whole effing show. Rob is an individual that showcased athletic ability and at the same time introduced the audience of sports entertainment to the word extreme. Rob beats to his own drum. His ability is second to none. What he can do in the air and his flexibility, it makes him one of a kind. And uh, I think that theme song fits him very well. I'm cashing in the money in the bank at one night stand. Whew. ECW one night stand in the famed Hammerstein Ballroom. The crowd was the, the best crowd I've ever performed in front of. They were all rooting for Rob Van Dam. The crowd was the show. 
we were just performing around them. This small group was so enthusiastic that it's a night I remember like it was yesterday. It was more than just Rob Van Dam versus John Cena. It was an underdog company versus the powerhouse that is WWE. It was something I, I've never experienced after that, and I don't know if I'll ever experience again. Even when it seems like the whole entire world is against you, if there was one fan still rooting for me in that crowd, I was gonna fight for him. And I was gonna fight for anyone cheering me on watching at home. Even in the most hostile environment, I wasn't gonna abandon the people that had my back, and I was gonna fight for him at ECW One Night Stand. <sighs> it happened so fast. I didn't find out till very late that I was, you know, gonna accept an open challenge with Kurt Angle. There are a lot of young guys back there that want to climb that ladder to success. Well, now's your chance to become a sensation just like me. He is one of the most gifted and decorated superstars in WWE history. He prides himself on being in great condition, and he expects physically the best out of anybody who steps in there with him. I wouldn't have had it happen any other way because I didn't have time to think about it. It's like, hey, you're doing this. When? You got five minutes. This is John Cena who could be looking to knock on the door of opportunity. What is the one quality that you possess that makes you think that you can walk out here and come into the ring and face the very best in the business? Ruthless aggression. Kirk showed that even though I was ready to be in a WWE ring, I wasn't yet at the levels of the WWE's greatest superstars, but I was gonna put in the work to get there as soon as I possibly could. Looking back on it now, 20 years later, I was trying to earn the respect of my peers when my focus should have been to earn the respect of the audience. And thank goodness I got a chance to learn that rather quickly. You know, here we're, we're talking about a 20 year retrospective and that doesn't happen without the first step. And I'm grateful to have such a demanding challenge. My thoughts on The Undertaker as an opponent, that's a luxury. He's the greatest, or, or, or has to be included in that conversation, like tip of the spear. Is one of the very few, very few, that uses aura and mystique completely to his advantage, in, in a very legitimate sense. Whether you get swept up in the moment, um, or you, you just lose focus. He's someone that carries a, a certain aura about him and it's, it's undeniable. And I figured there wasn't a better statement than like, go after the one everybody thinks is, is the man and that's The Undertaker. And don't, don't do it like you did in your debut. Don't go up to him and shake his hand and say, thanks for saying I did great, sir. In the moment, it was awesome. You know, looking back on it 20 years later, I went out there saying the one thing I have that Kurt Angle doesn't have is ruthless aggression. And then when someone of merit comes and shakes my hand, what do I do? Oh, thank, thank you so much. Wonderful moment to participate in. Did nothing for me as a superstar. Um, but the cool thing is I learned that and then uh, kind of put it into practice in 2003. I remember talking a whole lot of trash about him on the lead up to this match. And in vengeance, I'm gonna prove the big dog is all bark. I had such a chip on my shoulder. I kind of had a, a, a rebirth, the hip hop John Cena, the doctor of thugonomics. I thought I was gonna shock the world. That's how ready I was. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so my confidence got to be arrogance and that I was, I was, served a, a huge slice of humble pie. I had to face the music after talking a lot of trash and came up short. So we talked about 2003 and let's fast forward a, I don't know, a decade and a half. I'm kind of at a loss and I hit a bit of a rough patch where I was kind of running out of options to participate in WrestleMania. I can't muster a win in the Rumble. The next opportunity I have, I squander. So with about a month to go, I was put in a corner of like, how do I get to WrestleMania? 
I came up with an idea to look to the one attraction that is associated with WrestleMania. WrestleMania is The Undertaker. If I could drum up enough interest from the WWE Universe, maybe this would be something that they'd want to see. And if they want to see it, I'm really not forcing myself on like, I get this opportunity just because I'm John Cena. So I went on TV and I called him out. Well, screw it. I challenge The Undertaker to a match at WrestleMania. And no one had heard from The Undertaker, no one had seen The Undertaker, nobody knew what The Undertaker's position was, whether he was gonna show up or not. But every week, I would let the WWE Universe know, like, this is something you wanna see, right? And overwhelmingly, they would let me know that it was. So this, this meeting, which is actually one of my, my favorite build-ups to a WrestleMania, and one of my favorite WrestleManias of all time, have not a desperation. The mystique of being in a WrestleMania ring with The Undertaker is special, and this one was a great story. I'll never forget this WrestleMania experience. I really won't. It was special to me because it was the first time in about 15 to 20 years I got to watch WrestleMania as a fan. I always have to peek through the curtain. I got to go out and sit there. I could lose myself in, in the pageantry. I could lose myself in the event. And having that opportunity, that very rare opportunity, to see WrestleMania from both sides, from over the barricade and then in the ring, and then when you're in the ring, be in there with The Undertaker, that's what makes it absolutely unforgettable. There is no shame in losing to The Undertaker, especially at WrestleMania. Now, I called him out and I had to pay the price for it. But seeing the spotlight back on The Undertaker after he defeated me so quickly, you know, that made it a whole lot easier to handle. When we approach legacy, I think Triple H has done it as good or better than anybody else. A name that must be considered in the greatest of all time. I've done everything that there is to do. Every accolade, every championship. And his dedication to WWE, that puts him in a class by himself. Triple H and I have had some epic, epic matches. Two icons in their prime. I have developed, uh, not by my choosing, the moniker of one of the most polarizing superstars in the history of WWE. I was new. I was brash. Yeah. People still really enjoyed the WWE the way it was. I was a beacon of change that they didn't want. When you introduce the cerebral assassin into that equation, Triple H, the game, he was very aware of the environment and how to poke the bear of the WWE Universe to get them to really turn against me, to paint me in the light of like, this young kid doesn't have the ability that I have and doesn't belong here. And I hear you, you don't want him here. So allow me to use that as a psychological advantage when I go into these, these contests. It's never been personal between you and me. What it comes down to is being the best. WrestleMania 22. Triple H was the standard and it was a proving ground for me. A lot of people questioned, do I belong? Fast forward to 2008, I think now you can view Triple H versus myself as an attraction, not an achievement. The two most important figures in WWE today. 2008 was, man, I can't miss this because it is Godzilla versus King Kong. Triple H versus John Cena. Are you ready? I thought I had his number. I tapped him out at WrestleMania with the whole world watching. Triple H showed me that even the greatest have to regroup and come back even better the next time around. AJ Styles came into the WWE with an enormous resume, having done everything everywhere except for WWE. He debuted at the Royal Rumble to a lot of buzz. Can it be AJ Styles? The phenomenal one is here. Your first WWE match is your first day on the job, period. And he needed somebody to bring who he is at his core out of him. Man, what if just for one time, AJ Styles could face off against John Cena? I'm gonna run circles around you and I'll be the one saying, you can't see me. What if AJ Styles would have been here 15 years ago? 
you wouldn't have been a 15-time world heavyweight champion. I, AJ Styles, will be the face that runs this place. The right thing to do for AJ Styles to exist in the WWE was, was give him identity. Beat up John Cena. Beat up John Cena. That became his identity, and that gave him a foothold. It's like the first time I was able to take off the boots and tights and rhyme two words together. It was just something to hold on to and something for fans to, to believe in you for. AJ was basically perfect that night. He had an answer for everything. Losing at SummerSlam hurt, but I knew with the right work and preparation, I'd get another chance at him. I knew we weren't done yet. I, th I think Edge is the definition of underdog. I don't, I don't think he's matched at all with, with passion and imagination. But through that, through, through giving everything, even at a very young age, he was told by everybody that like, you're only gonna make it this far. And a lot of that was, you're never even gonna make it. I was in the same boat as Edge. You're never gonna make it, kid. So when you put two of those people together to draw an attraction, either you make it or you don't. Anyone with any foresight to like a crystal ball of WWE is being, this is not gonna work. This will be a one moment thing and that's it. I think Edge and I have had thousands of matches together. <laughs> In almost every capacity, we've done almost everything that could be done. My favorite moment with Edge would be a performance we had in Toronto. And in Toronto, everyone cheered for him. There's a, a wide camera shot of the two of us circling in the ring. And you can audibly hear and read my lips. Edge was bad and got everyone to cheer for him. Do people think it's fair that I have to defend this title against John Cena at SummerSlam? He was and is still always able to kind of morph in and out of these dimensions he's created for himself. This story's gonna have a happy ending, but it's gonna be for me. I really thought I had Edge cornered. I should have known that only make him more dangerous. Even with the threat of losing the WWE Championship, if he were disqualified, Edge found a way to set me up cheat his way to another win. I didn't see that coming. Edge being a single superstar had the luxury of winning the first ever Money in the Bank briefcase. And the first of something, no one really knows what it is. And no one really knows its value until it's established. So Edge has this briefcase that is supposedly guarantees him a championship match. And precedent had never been set. And then we get to New Year's Revolution and the Elimination Chamber, which is a grueling match, which is a match that I managed to make it through and do okay. Here is your winner, John Cena! And then I hear music. He's been killing me. And then I hear that there's gonna be another match and it's gonna happen right now. <laughs> and it's with a fresh edge who cashes in the Money in the Bank briefcase to take the championship from me that I just earned. <laughs> Not only did it seem unfair, but it was, it was more than just a loss. It was a loss of a lot of momentum. There's always something at stake. It's either the championship or you're next in line. So you've just gone through this thing, put yourself in tremendous physical harm for a yield for this opportunity. And the next stop is WrestleMania. So behind the chamber, cross your fingers for the rumble, I'm going, WrestleMania's gonna be awesome. So that's what I was thinking. As, as a champion, it sucks. But the important thing about that night is it established what money in the bank means. And that's for the greater good. Whoever has the briefcase, it's now established that they're gonna be the champ. It's just a matter of time. After an experience like this, there's no other choice. I was not gonna let it be that easy for Edge. He'd done well picking his spot, but I'd never let that be the last image the WWE Universe had of John Cena. Roman Reigns is exactly who he says he is. I think a lot of folks don't like to hear it from Roman because of the arrogance that he says it with, but you gotta believe it. He proves himself each and every night. 
He's gotten to the point now that he doesn't even step foot in the ring, unless it's with a must-see opponent in a must-see event. Me, I'll take any match. Give me the first one, give me the middle, give me the last. I don't just put me in the ring. Roman is like, not worth my time. That's how good Roman Reigns is. Roman has always been big, and Roman has always been muscular. Roman has always been athletic, and I think people are fooled by their first impression of Roman Reigns. He's super intelligent, and I think that gives Roman a tremendous advantage. I've had the luxury of being an opponent to Roman Reigns over the course of his career, and I could see it go from new underdog to peer to superior. Roman has failed a lot, but the guy doesn't quit. And SummerSlam was a clean cut case of cycle of life for Roman, where he is clearly the favorite, but not too many big pay-per-views. Can you put John Cena in a marquee matchup and be like, he's outgunned, he's the underdog. This SummerSlam matchup with Roman Reigns, this specific one, that's absolutely what happened. Whereas any, any one of our matches in the past, you can see he was not yet there. SummerSlam 2021, not only was he there, he was polished and surgical. At this point in my career, it'd be easy to rest on my laurels. Come on, I'm wearing a tie. But having somebody like Roman Reigns, somebody I've yet to defeat, that pushes me. Maybe we lock horns again one day, maybe we don't. Coming up short at SummerSlam, that wasn't the end for me. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is an example of one of those individuals we're lucky enough to see. The match between myself and The Rock was a wish list for me. And the template I used for this was a by any means necessary template. I have a legitimate beef with Dwayne Johnson. The first time he got a taste of the bright lights of Hollywood, he was out of here faster than I could say, Rocky, don't go. This guy has gone to another universe. The only way I can lasso him back, make as much noise as I can, and call this guy out for being a fraud. The people's champ, he's never with the people. Rock, your words are see-through. We got the WWE Universe to be part of a magical moment. The WWE has gone from the dominant and iconic, can you smell what the rock is cooking, all the way to you can't see me. You can see when the two people are like this for real. And I think that was undeniable with The Rock and I. The Rock says we do something that's never been done before. The Rock says we make the biggest matchup of all time. WrestleMania 28, John Cena versus The Rock. I got to rumble up enough noise and in the process, really challenge this individual who I have great respect for and I idolize, and who's just on another planet. But I got, I got to, for a second, I got to touch the sun. I wanted this match for years. I basically spoke it into existence. And I thought I had The Rock's number. Just like that, I was iconically sitting on the ramp, completely stunned, watching him celebrate. I could only cross my fingers that I get another chance. What makes Brock Lesnar unique? Uh, the most intimidating first impression of any human being ever. <laughs> this guy's a bad dude. Mix that in with the athletic ability, the agility of a gymnast. He's built like a bank vault and he has the power of a diesel truck. Brock is the one guy who will just take what he wants. Brock walked on to pro football after not having played a down in high school and made the team. And they made the team and they wanted to ship to Europe. He's like, nope, I'm going to the MMA. And then went into mixed martial arts and dominates. And then he comes back to WWE. What was the conversation like among WWE superstars? Do we have enough underwear? Because I'm gonna need a change of shorts. Man, you don't wanna be a 
across the ring from that dude with that look in his eye. That's, you, you don't want to be there. It, nothing you can do. You need luck. You need luck, you need timing, you need moons to line up to be able to get, to get one over on him. Because Brock functioning as Brock is unstoppable. In the arena, he's unstoppable. Settle in. It's for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Cena, Lesnar, the biggest fight of the summer. Fine. Brock Lesnar kicked my ass at SummerSlam in 2014. There's no hiding from it. But, you know, I still managed to walk away with my head held high. Because that match, more than any other match in my entire career, that is the night I think I proved that I would never, ever give up. I fought Brock with everything I had until there was simply nothing left. They say that when they're talking about the heart somebody showed, well, that means they got their butt kicked. Okay, still showed a lot of heart. Never give up. So, uh, Backlash 2003 is the ultimate good news, bad news scenario. Um, the good news, John Cena makes his way to his first championship match. The bad news, your opponent's Brock Lesnar. But if you want the championship, you gotta try to climb the mountain. And I was really, really excited for that match. I think that was still where uh, my youthful enthusiasm got in the way of genuine perspective. But once again, when you're essentially a startup, everything is a win. Everything in that direction is a win. So it was really good to be able to have a championship match and be thought of as somebody who could start to be considered for that conversation. This is John Cena, one of those many young talents that's been working his way through the WWE system. The WWE graduating developmental class of 2002 is now looked back at as like, man, this was a gold rush of talent with names like Randy Orton, Dave Bautista, myself, Brock Lesnar. It's like, man, what you don't realize is that we were developing ourselves where the roster included Kurt Angle, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, before the perspective and the environment of sports entertainment is very cutthroat. It is a very swimming with the sharks. So looking back on it, it's great. We all made it. We all made an impact. And I'm so grateful that all of us were able to contribute. It's always easy to tell the story 20 years later, but not one of us thought we were gonna make it. Brock being the exception. That loss really hurt, because I didn't know when I'd get another chance. I didn't know if I'd get another chance of becoming a WWE champion. You just, you never know in this business. Anything can happen in the WWE, that's a fact. It was a gut punch, but I had to accept that I'd done my best and I'd come up short. And I'd just have to try again later. If I got that opportunity again, I would do everything in my power to take advantage of it. Think with Batista, you see this mountain of an individual, over six feet, uh, 300 pounds plus, tattoos, shaved head. There's a whole lot more than meets the eye. I've never admitted this to anyone, but for six years I've been watching you. I had the perspective of he always had something to prove, like through all of his success, which is his Hall of Fame career, it always felt like he was giving off the energy that he always had something to prove. I lash out, and when I lash out, people get hurt. I've had a lot of matches with Batista, and I think all of them mean something, because anytime you get two performers that are at a level of success, both Batista and John Cena were loved by the audience. Uh, very rarely was the perception of good guy versus good guy equals good event. It's always usually a disappointment. And then I kind of came in and shook everything up where it was almost like the John Cena character will be good until we put him with another good guy and then the audience can turn on him. We're gonna find out who's better! The answer's gonna be me. But it made for a lot of tough nights with me because even, even the nights that I did well, it was like I was playing on the road every night. I never had a home game. There's an explosion brewing at the biggest blockbuster of the summer. I was more than ready to test myself against Batista's power. But with someone like him, one wrong move is too many. One second I'm flying in the air, and the next I'm 
hearing his music playing, and he's announced the winner. I wanted that win really bad. I wanted to put my stamp on the whole who's better discussion between me and Batista. But now I knew the stakes, and any time we'd compete, I wouldn't mess up that same way again. So as we talk about different superstars, one word to define Randy Orton is natural. He makes anything effortless. Aspects of Randy's personality were glaring, even from his first walk down the ramp. And the persona that he shared in Evolution, the persona of the legend killer, I think all of that can be summed up in arrogance. And someone who, in the early stages of his career, was kind of apprehensive and arrogant about wanting to do the work. Admittedly, his words, even still, when he was apathetic, he looked a hundred times better than me at my best. One of the great rivalries in the history of the WWE, Cena versus Orton. I look at my existence with Randy Orton in its totality. I don't think there were two players of that class of 2002 that not only leaned on each other more than Randy and I, but forged the value of, of that class more than Randy and I. Because Randy and I were put in so many matches to bear the weight of the company that they kept asking us to do it, and they kept asking us to do it, and they kept asking us to do it. And that's, um, that's a symbol that you did something right. At Hell in a Cell, when they lock the door, I will destroy Randy Orton. When you compete against someone as many times as I've competed against Randy Orton, there's going to be times when it's not your night or the match is just gonna be better suited for your opponent. The cell itself, Randy Orton knows how to use it to his advantage. You don't walk into hell in a cell thinking good thoughts. Well, maybe Randy Orton does, but a good thought to Randy Orton is a nightmare for anyone else. He told John Cena, quote, I will not be responsible for my actions inside the cell tonight. Now that's scary. So there you have it. The absolute best that the WWE has to offer over the last 20 years. Superstars that by hook or by crook managed to accomplish that oh so rare feat, a victory over me. I hope you noticed that not one of those matches ended with me giving up. I have a feeling you can guess why. The only question left unanswered is, who was my greatest opponent? And while I can make a strong case for a number of these talent, no problem, I'm more interested in who you, honorable card-carrying member of the WWE Universe believe that superstar to be. Randy Orton and I waged countless battles. Every time I stepped into the ring with Batista, it was like worlds colliding. Edge was a big pain in my you-know-what for years, and I've never been able to defeat Roman Reigns. The Rock and I made history, while Brock took me to Suplex City. AJ Styles and Kurt Angle were peerless, Every encounter with them was a test of nerves that demanded perfection. Rob Van Dam went to the extreme with an arena full of people happy to see him do it. Triple H took a WrestleMania loss to heart and waited for his chance to get revenge. And The Undertaker? Well, he's The Undertaker. So go ahead, make your choice, and I'll see you both in the ring. I'll just have you know, that I'm feeling in tip-top shape, almost unbeatable. Hey, now I hope all those wins didn't get you thinking you were just gonna roll me over. Don't get discouraged though. Happens to the most accomplished superstars in WWE history. And there's no shame in losing to me. There's only shame in giving up. Never give up. Dust yourself off and come back when you're ready. I'll be right here waiting. Whew! That was a hell of a match. For credit where it's due, you got it done. You showed some great moves out there, a lot of heart. And you earned a little tip of the cap from me, John Cena. Now, I'm not happy about the loss, but I'll learn from it. And I'll come back better. And we'll see each other again, but for now, I think it's the only honorable thing to say. Job well done. And that, my friends, looks to bring us to the end of our time together. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Sometimes it can be difficult to confront the times where we fail. 
but there's always a valuable lesson and something you can learn from so you can come back even stronger than ever. I've said it before, that a person's character is not judged when they ride that wave of success. When everyone chants their name, when everyone wants to be their friend, your character is put to the test when your back is against the wall. Each of these matches, despite not giving me the outcome I wanted, are still so important to my career. To me as a performer, these were the moments I truly had to live the words I've preached. Never give up. Yeah, it's easier to revel in the best of times, the sense of accomplishment, the physical feats performed, and the opportunity to do it all in front of the best fans in the entire world, the WWE Universe. But these matches brought something different out of me, a better version of me, directly because of the lessons I learned. The heart displayed, the grit needed, 20 years. Again, thank you, the WWE Universe, for always- Hold on one second there, John. What? What What more could there possibly be? John, you're an all-time great. We have three of WWE's best legends waiting for you. Grab your gear. Let's go. Our gear? Yeah, all right. Yeah, let's do it. You see that? Right when I think nothing can surprise me in this business, I find myself in the ring with three of the WWE's biggest legends. Bruno San Martino dominated the 60s and 70s. His two reigns as WWE Champion combined for nearly 13 years. Hulkamania? Ran wild during the 80s, headlining WrestleManias and clocking his own WWE Championship reign of four years. Stone Cold Steve Austin reigned supreme at the height of one of the WWE's most infamous eras, the Attitude Era. His victories over The Undertaker, The Rock, and Triple H propelled him into the stratosphere of superstardom. And then he came back and defeated Kevin Owens at WrestleMania last year. Legends. All of them. <laughs> All time. <laughs> that's what they said. Yeah, that's quite an honor. I'm thankful to even be considered to be in the same category, to be mentioned with the same prestige as them. These were defining moments in my career. These were the moments where I had to regroup, pick myself up, and find a way to come back better than before. Like I said, it's easy to keep going when things are going your way. But the times when you're down, when everyone thinks you're out, and you manage to rebound, you manage to show exactly what you're made of, these are the times when we learn who we are, what drives us, and we learn that as long as we keep our head in the game, there is nothing that can stop you from achieving anything you put in your sights. I hope we all learn something here. It's okay to lose. It's okay to fall short. What's unacceptable at all times is giving up. At any point after any one of these matches, I could have packed it in. We don't do that in the C Nation. We hustle, we show loyalty, we earn respect, we never give up. Thanks for playing the WWE 2K23 Showcase. And until our paths meet again, I'll see you soon.